I hope you all are ready for this video because in my last Deltarune video there were so many comments about different tracks for me to listen to and I am here to fulfill your requests. That's what I live for, that's what I do. I was aggressive. That's what I do! So I do believe it is time for a part two. And that's the official noise of the part two. Before we start, I thought I'd let you know that I have a gaming channel. I've even got a video of me playing Undertale over there. So if you want to see me play a bunch of games, the link will be in the description below. This first one is a shouty. It's called Don't Forget and is track number 39. The title also has the name Laura Shigihara. Maybe they're involved in this? Or maybe that's part of the title. Who knows? When the oh! I've kept saying tracks because I didn't want to say songs since there wasn't singing. And now for, I think, the first time in listening to either Undertale or Deltarune stuff, we have straight up vocals, like lyrics and singing. What's happening? Really cute voice though. And the places that you know seem like fantasy. Oh my goodness. Disney? Disney voice? That's really pretty. It's really nice. The promise in our hearts. Oh. I'm such a fan of when the melody shifts to those kind of notes. It feels like it has this minor shift, but it does help add this emotional weight. I'm already being served up such lovely stuff. Don't forget, I'm with you in the dark. Despite being sad, it kind of, uh, I don't know, felt nice and motivating, right? Feels as... <laughs> Just as it switched to the next song in the playlist, we got a drastic shift in tone, y'all. <laughs> but yeah, that was super pretty. Just such a beautiful, soft tone to the voice. But like I said, genuinely, even though it felt like sad and forlorn, there was still this weird sense of like almost comfort. I don't know. I think it's because of this element of things kind of suck right now, but hey, I'll still be with you even when they do. Although I guess it seems more like a spiritual being with you, not literally physically being with you, but thought still counts. Great start. And now I'm ready for this tone shift that we heard briefly. <laughs> the next one is called Smart Race. Really is so different. This is more what I was expecting. And the weird other sounds that are kind of climbing up and down. I don't think this is necessarily meant to sound creepy, but it sounds, I don't know, a little sneaky. That's really cool. I like that slow drop down. Oh, now we're getting those medieval aspects again. This sounds a little similar to one of the ones we listened to in the last video. That was really weird. There was this slower low synth that kind of gradually came in in the background, but also felt like a little bit offbeat. I think it helped add this sort of erratic sound, even though it's not some huge, crazy all over the place sound. It's like controlled erratic. There's not that much going on, and yet somehow I'm still tapping my foot. <laughs> oh dude, offbeat snare hits always down. I liked that a lot. And one thing remains consistent with Toby Fox, and that is that he plays with rhythm all the time. I love it. It's not too often that you hear snare hits come in that offbeat, and that really helped convince me that controlled erratic is definitely what he was going for. It does fascinate me just how much depth can come out of relatively simplistic tracks like this. I wonder if there's ever gonna be a Deltarune or Undertale video where I don't just lavish praise onto Toby the entire time. I gotta find something, right? Even if it's like, hey Toby, I know that you produced these soundtracks like so perfectly and you did it all like single-handedly and that's amazing, but hey man, you're short. I don't even know how tall he is. I bet he's like 18 feet high. He's like a titan. Eren Yeager. <laughs> Attack on Toby. Fox on titan. <laughs> the next one is called Deal Gone Wrong and is number 38. I'm sorry for anything I've done wrong. This feels like I'm about to be hunted. This feels like the kind of music that would play as my loan shark comes back to collect on my debt. And he walks through my house, looks at my wooden floorboards and goes, these are really nice floorboards, really nice house. Shame if it burnt down. There's something vaguely uncomfortable about this and I can't put my finger on it. 
I think it's also how as the song progresses, because there's this reverb going on through the other instruments, the delay on it lasts for so long that by the time that that fades out, there's more layers coming in on top of it to add to this ghostly effect. Oh. <laughs> I literally paused it like three seconds before the end. So we just get this split second before it ends. I find it wonderful and fascinating that even a short snippet like that can still have some sort of impact on me. I don't quite know why my reaction was so visceral, but that's fine. We'll run with it. It's not like being scarred is anything new on this channel for me. It seems to actually just be what my channel is lately. <laughs> this one is called The Dark Truth and it's number 36. I feel like the tone of this might also be a little uh, evil, a little, little, little dark. I mean, it literally says the dark truth. So what's the secret, huh? What's your dark truth? Killed a man in 54. Decades and decades and decades before I was born. I was naught but a conceived notion and yet somehow I still strangled a man in New Orleans. Why is it always New Orleans? What does this have to do with anything? This is the great quality content you get over here at Matthew McKenna. MatthewMcKenna.com. That is actually a website. <laughs> it's where my merch is. <laughs> I like the fade in and out there. It's a great technique. Well, yeah, I mean, it does sound pretty dark. I'm not quite as on edge as the last one, but I'm expecting something still. I feel like something's about to just cut through and be a little bit uncomfortable. I wonder if they're gonna change from that note, the really deep note. Or maybe it'll just play it through the whole way. Oh, there you go, that's a nice deviation. Okay, this got real pretty real quick. Dude. It started with that continuous dark tone, this really ominous like, oh. And after that one slight deviation, just shifting that note slightly, the whole thing sort of had this gradual change and became a lot more wide open and soundscapey. Cool choices all around. And the higher pitched piano contrasts amazingly. I love when we get these slower, really echoey sounds. I liked that one a lot. And I think what made it particularly cool was that, like I said at the start, I was kind of a little bit on edge, expecting a bit of a change. I didn't think it would change like that. I thought it would go a bit darker, but then once it did shift and it released that tension, it released it in this nice, airy, relaxing way. So the whole vibe kind of changed instead of just doubling down on the darkness. Listen here, even the name of this one makes me excited. Scarlet Forest. And I feel like we're gonna get something with an interesting aesthetic, which makes me outrageously excited. And nice, it's a kind of a more of a creeping tone. Why does this make me think of pirates? Am I alone in that? I feel like I should be on a ship, not a forest, actually, come to think of it. I guess being on the open ocean is maybe, maybe as far away from being in a forest as you could be. If you're on a wooden boat, it could be made out of the forest. Damn, bitch, you're right. Why are you gonna mess with my head like that? <laughs> The way that he plays with this orchestra sound, I don't understand how he smashes it every time. Oh my God, sitting here staring at this logo all this time and only now, literally only now, did I realize that the U is just the N, but flipped upside down. And did you notice that it's the same with the E? <laughs> I feel like I paused to say something, but Andrew blew my mind so hard that I've, I've literally forgotten what it was. So let's just hit play. So beautiful and flowy. Every time I just feel like I need to close my eyes and chill, man. Okay, I... Flute? Was that flute, mofo? Oh my god! I both love and hate how much this soundtrack can just shock me. I can't remember the last time I so giddily just exclaimed, Flute? <laughs> I also loved the addition of the drums. It feels like we had this open flowy section and now it's like, all right, we're setting some rhythm. This is like, seriously, it feels like a nicely composed orchestra piece.
so why hasn't Toby Fox like produced a soundtrack for a movie yet? Or has he? Maybe he has. Hans Zimmer better look out. Toby Fox is coming for the Pirates of the Caribbean soundtrack. Such a wealth of lovely sounds. And really light ones that aren't like distracting too much. Why is this making me so happy? If this is like gonna be at the end where something sad happens, I'll feel very stupid and be very confused, but there's just something about it. I don't even care, I'm not ashamed, sounds happy, which is a welcome change from a couple of the other ones. I don't feel like someone's about to threaten me. The piano notes at the end there were really nice. However, I feel like a couple of those chords were either detuned a little bit so they sounded a bit strange, or maybe just slightly modified chords to make them sound a bit weird. But it's been a consistent technique and one that I've really enjoyed is hearing Toby just go, what if we took this but made it sound a little weird. <laughs> Especially at the end of something like that, where it's so intentionally crafted and composed to give such a specific sound. And then at the end, you kind of just go, what if we juxtaposed that? The last track we're gonna listen to is called A Cyber's World. Oh, sorry, <clears throat> A Cyber's World? I feel like, I feel like that might be a melody that was used either in one of these songs that came up or one of the songs in my last video. I can't quite pinpoint it, but it does feel like a melody that's being used in a completely different way. It's gonna be a big hit. Oh, maybe. <laughs> oh, what a way to send this video out. That bass, buzzy, filthy bass. Again, making me feel so chill, man. I could just bounce to this. This is another one of those songs that has this air of finality. I can never quite pinpoint it, and I feel like I say that about so many songs, and obviously not every song can be the one at the end, but it just has that, and I think it comes from some sort of sense of triumph. As always, I love how the layers kind of stay in there as things go on. So you end up with this more compiled thing. Weird. What a ghostly tone. So this is definitely something I've mentioned before, but comparing this song and the last song is such a great example of it. The variety and difference in genres you get in these soundtracks is phenomenal. Think of what we're listening to right now. Compare it to the last one, how orchestral that was. It's so different, but still thematically makes sense. And being able to blend tracks like that into one soundtrack is in and of itself impressive, even if you didn't write them. I also like that this has a more steady rhythm because all the other ones have been a bit more all over the place. Whereas this time we're getting a consistent hit and it's all very much in time. There's more slight variations and they work. If you absolutely turn up the bass to this, it would go off at a party. There's gotta be mad remixes of this one, for sure. There's the belly sounds too. I actually thought it was gonna end there so that we kind of are continuing is really nice. Picking up the pace a little on the plucks as well. That was cute. That was so cute. Look, I don't know how to end this video without, again, just slapping so much praise onto Toby and to the soundtrack. I mean, it's well deserved, but I feel like if I just sat here going on and on about it, that'd be kind of boring. It would just be me going, it's amazing, it's amazing, it's amazing, it's amazing. <laughs> but really, seriously, still just so ridiculously impressed. And I'm so happy that I get to do videos like this because the different worlds and the different talent that I'm being introduced to is just so good, so phenomenal. And I never knew how much I needed all of this in my life. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please don't forget to click that like button and as always, have an awesome time until I see you next. See ya.